so from the thumbnail, you can tell what we did. Uh, we're going carburetor. So uh, here it is. This is the setup. Okay. Uh, this is a six, 600 CFM double pumper with a mechanical uh, choke. And um, let me get the, uh, see if I can show you guys the part number for that. Uh, this, uh, 4150 600 CFM universal double pumper. 0-4776S. So that's the part number for it. Uh, so I put a poll on Facebook uh, about uh, a couple days ago and got a ton of response on that. That was cool. Uh, a lot of people were saying between a 600 and a 650. That's when that was most of the votes. I put a couple other uh, choices on there that were just kind of a joke. But um, so I went with the 600. Uh, just from the, the research I've done, uh, like, the RPM that this is going to be turning, the cubic inches, um, you know, it's a manual transmission. So we don't really need a vacuum secondary. Uh, so I went with a mechanical secondary. Uh, usually, like if you go with a, if you have an automatic, you may want to go with a vacuum secondary because of how it, you know, it'll, it'll bog if it doesn't, if you don't have the right converter and all that. But anyway, um, so that's why I chose that, the 600. Uh, it's a little bit big for this, which to me is okay. That's not a big deal. I just didn't want to go to a 650. I want this thing to idle really nice. I want it to run good. I want it to get good gas mileage. I'm going to drive this car quite a bit. Okay. So it's going to be something I drive all the time. Uh, what else? Okay. So let's pull this carb off here and we'll go over the intake. Set this over here. And I will be running also a uh, phenolic spacer. This is just a plastic carb spacer, okay? So like in a street application, you don't really want your carb to get heat soaked. So you want some kind of a spacer there, okay? So I'm, I already had that. I didn't have to buy that. This was something, th these are things I've already had. Uh, I also have, I actually have quite a bit of carb stuff, carb related stuff anyway. Uh, I have, Back when I was running a, a carb um, ultra street car, I had this whole jet assortment here, so I still have that. I doubt I'll need half of them because a lot of them are really big. But um, oh, and I do believe that this carburetor has jet extensions in the secondary, so that would be for like if you're drag racing. Um, so it's got a few features. This carb wasn't the cheapest one in the world, uh, but it wasn't the most expensive either. But it's got some decent features. Uh, it's got the sight glass windows to adjust your float levels, uh, four corner idle, um, it's a double pumper. So if you don't know what a double pumper is, most of you know, but uh, it just means that there's a squirters in the primary and secondary. Okay, and then you're gonna have two cams, uh, one here and one here that runs those. Okay, and you can, you can adjust the cams to give you a different flow, you know, characteristics on the squirters themselves you can change the squirters make them bigger smaller whatever and um yeah it also has a nice large vacuum port right there so we'll have to come up with some kind of a vacuum block because we have to run the brake booster and also the air conditioner needs a vacuum source as well sorry i got a little distracted there but okay back to the intake this is a ford racing intake okay this is the part number, uh, M9424-F302. Okay, so this is not the best intake you can buy. It, this is something, um, and I'll t the reason why I bought this is because of the height, okay? There was better options that would work better with the cam and all that, uh, but I really, really wanna keep this under the stock hood. So this is about an inch, inch and a quarter lower than like a, uh, like an Edelbrock RPM performer or something like that, uh, which an R RPM performer would have been a better intake. Okay, this this is going to struggle up to 6,000 RPMs, which, you know, like I said, this is a street car. I'm not that concerned about it. I'm more concerned about keeping my stock hood on there because I just, to me, it's, it's, it's going to be a daily driver. I don't want a hood sticking up. It's just my preference. I don't, I, I like that I have a stock hood on this car too. But um, pretty simple, dual plane, doesn't have an air gap, so it keeps it nice and low. Um, so the gaskets I'm gonna be using are the Felpro 1250s, okay? 
Also, again, I had those just laying around. I had so much stuff laying around. I also have the air cleaner. This is the air cleaner I'm gonna be using. It's a drop mounted air cleaner, okay, with a K&N filter. So this will also keep it nice and low, probably right around in this area here, keeps it. And um, I was kind of looking at the uh, regular, just a regular GT40 intake. And it looks like if you take a look at it, I was kind of comparing it to, you know, what it would be with, with this compared to what it looked like with the carb and the, the, uh, with the air cleaner and everything on it. And, um, it was right around the same height. So fingers crossed, I'm hoping that it fits and, uh, we don't have to worry about the hood clearance. It, I mean, there's other things we can do. You know, we can get some drop mounts, get the uh, convertible mounts, which drops it another inch. So if we, if, if it's tight, we can do that still. Okay. So, okay, back to the gasket. So the 1250 gasket works really well with GT40P heads. Now these heads, let's get this out of here. Uh, these heads are not poured or anything. They're basically stock P heads, okay? And the 1250 gasket actually fits really nice. Um, there's a little bit of, you know, meat around the corners here, but very little. Okay, so these fit really nice. And I'll show you a way that I've always done this to port match your intake to the gasket or basically get them lined up. Okay, so what I do is um, I basically install the gaskets, you know, with your little hooks are on the uh, head gasket part there and um, set your intake on it. Just make sure they don't move or anything like that. It's kind of hard doing this with one hand, but you'll get the idea of it in a second. Okay, once you get that on there, you want to make sure that um, this is pretty level. Okay, there, it just dropped in right there. Okay, you can see the gasket is at the top of the intake there and the very top of the intake there. Okay, and then look down and, and line your holes up too. So when you look and you got all your holes lined up, okay, so there at that point, your gasket's gonna be in a certain spot, okay? And what I do, which I've already done, I've already actually done it and I've been messing with this uh, today um where's my pen oh here so i take a pen uh and i basically mark right here you can see it i did it already but i mark on the intake gasket and i trace around the edge of it okay put a nice thick line there around here too you can't do it on this side but you can do it over here you can see i already got the line there Okay, so now we know two things. We know that this line lines up here. The gasket is flush to the top of the intake. I mean, it's like perfectly flush. And we have a, we have a mark here too. Now, when you take this off, we'll take it over to the bench here. Okay, so I got it over here on the bench. Uh, so basically what you do is you just line up your marks, okay, which I already done. You just get your marks and you line them up, look underneath there and get it close. And then you look at the top of the gasket, make sure the top of the gasket is flush with the top of the intake. Okay. And, you know, on both sides, obviously. So you just kind of mess with it until you get it lined up. Move that a little bit. Okay. And then, um, so what you're going to do at that point, you know, kind of look at your holes. Your holes will line up too. I have it on a little bit of an angle, so it's wanting to slide every time I move it. But I think you guys kind of get the idea. So then you just basically, you mark your intake port. You know, you mark around it with a pen or uh, you could use a Sharpie or whatever you have, you know. And um, then when you take the gasket off, you know, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna port match it. So when you put it back on, it should it should line up now on a dual plane intake like this there's really no way to look down the port to see if you've got it lined up perfect there's just no way so you have to kind of rely on that you know the gasket to you have to kind of rely on the gasket to help you port match it so i've already done this one if you notice uh it's not completely done but you can see that this has been started to be port matched and then this one is not
you can see the difference. Um, so I'll put you on a little time lapse. I'm gonna do, I'll start working on this. I'll finish this one up and then we'll start working on this one. As you can see, I've already drawn the line on this one. It's kind of hard to see, but I, I can see it there. Um, so the, I'll just follow the line. And um, uh, what I'm using to pour, it, I, I used to have a nice deburr, but I can't find it right now for some reason. So I'm just using like this um, end mill. It's got a, it's like a four flute carbide end mill. It works really good. It's fast. So you have to be kind of careful with that because of how much material it takes. It takes quite a bit as you're going. So you got to be real careful because it can really dig in. Um, with like a deburr, they're much more forgiving. You can go up and down, up and down, and it's not going to like create a crater. So, and then at that point, what I do is I just, then I hit it with a roll, you know, a sanding roll and finish it up like that, clean it up. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to go any more extensive than that. It's going to be real simple. So I'll put you on a time lapse. I'll show you just doing one of them. And then um, after that, we'll go over some of the other things we got to go with the carb setup. <laughs> So we're getting pretty close. Uh, I got this one almost done. A uh, little bit more work to do in here, but keep in mind that the uh, the gasket is actually just a slight bit bigger than those P heads. So if I'm a little under, that's okay. That's no problem. See, I'm still working on this one, but it's getting closer. And you can see the big difference there of, you know, that versus we're getting close to those edges. I'm still working over here a little bit, but yeah, we'll get it eventually. I just kind of wanted to show you a little quick time lapse on that. Uh, it's going to take me some time, but I'm going to take my time and, you know, finish the whole thing and, and make it look real good and before I install it. So anyway, let's go over some of the, uh, let me unplug this. I'll go over some of the other stuff I got. Uh, I did order a, just a regular old Ford DuraSpark. Uh, distributor, you know, like for an 85 Mustang or whatever with a steel distributor gear uh, for the hydraulic roller cam. And uh, so that will go to the MSD, which I picked this up off of uh, Facebook for a pretty good deal, 150 bucks for uh, this. Uh, we got uh, the wiring harness here. And also the guy gave me a brand new uh, Blaster 2 coil. So all that. Uh, if you, you know, if I was to go buy this digital 6AL, those are uh, th over 300 bucks brand new. The coil is like another 70 or 80. So, so yeah, I got the whole thing for 150. So, you know, obviously uh, he told me it works, but you know how that is. Um, I'm just gonna have to go off of what he said. He, you know, he pulled it off a running car. So fingers crossed that works. Um, and I downloaded um, actually the instructions. Yeah, all the instructions are on uh, msd.com. So this is the instructions for a Ford DuraSpark uh, distributor. Okay, so it tells you which wires to hook to on the distributor. Pretty simple. It's two wires that go to the distributor and then um, everything else is, uh, you know, you have your power wire, your red wire is the power wire switched and then your battery terminals, coil, distributor, and then your tack output is your gray. And boom, that's it. Should fire right up. Uh, so yeah, we also got a, this is an interesting thing that a lot of people have a lot of questions about. Um, this is a bypass regulator. Okay, this is TrickFlow makes this. And this actually will bypass uh, high pressure fuel. So I'm gonna keep, you know, I'm gonna keep the stock tank, I'm gonna keep the stock fuel pump. 
which I have uh, over here. This has a 255 Walboro in it, okay? So that should supply plenty of fuel for this setup, okay? You should be able to make 300 horsepower easy on a, on a Walboro 255, okay? So we're gonna regulate that down from high pressure to around five PSI. And this, this regulator will do that, okay? Uh, I know Aeromotive makes, makes one too, but this is actually made by Aeromotive. Um, it says trick flow by Aeromotive right there. So it, it's a little less expensive than the, the, uh, the Aeromotive one. I think this was like 140 or something like that. Whereas the Aeromotive one was like 180 or something like that. And it was a little bit bigger, which I don't need. Uh, this has 3.8 NPT, which I should have. Uh, I have some of my stuff here. Before I ordered fittings, I wanted to check to see what I had first. Like I've got, these are some uh, fittings for the, uh, the carburetor itself, uh, extensions. I, so I don't know all everything I have. Um, I know I have some fittings. So this right here, yeah, that works there. So uh, that's a dash six to three eighths NPT. And I have a few of those. So yeah, like I said, I wanted to go through my fittings first before I went ahead and ordered any type of fittings. So the only other problem we're gonna have is, and if you guys have any solutions, um, I'm gonna have to adapt the stock fuel lines, which I'm gonna pull the fuel lines off the 95, because, and also the fuel sending unit off this 95 because they're a little bit bigger. Uh, so I heard that's, that's an, like an upgrade. Uh, so I need to adapt the stock fuel lines. Okay, so the stock fuel lines are this here, which I'm going to pull these off of this car and try to reroute them on this car because this car has no fuel lines whatsoever. Everything's been pulled off of it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, this is AC. So there should be a return here somewhere. Uh, yeah, right here. So there's a return there and a feed here. So I need to come up with something to come off of uh, these fittings here. I think I think Earl's Performance or Earl's makes some of those or one of the fitting companies makes an adapter that we can go from this here, pull this out of the way, from this here to a to a dash six line. And then all I have to do is run like a short dash six to the regulator and then from the regulator to the uh, uh, carburetor. So it'll also be a return too. you know, we'll have a, the return line as well. Uh, that's I think that's I think you have to have a return when you're using a high pressure pump to return that that fuel uh, Anyway, like I said, uh, I've got quite a few fittings. I'll have to go through to see what fits <clears throat> and See all what I need and then I'll go ahead and order some fittings But you know, I mean as far as everything else goes. Yeah, it comes with um, some gaskets um, Which I already have that you know, I have gaskets already for the spacer, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So I did get, um, I got the balancer put on, um, went ahead and painted it, cleaned it up real nice, painted it. I actually need to take this spacer back off because I'm not gonna be using that. I have to get, um, I didn't realize it, but the 95s, the water pump is shorter. So uh, I need to get a different pulley for here and here because they don't line up. So the Fox body pulleys, uh, the, the water pump pulleys like inset a little bit and the crank pulleys uh, outset a little bit. So the 95s won't work on the, the uh, Fox body stuff. So I gotta find some stock pulleys. Um, but yeah, everything, went, everything else went on real nice. Uh, the the uh, timing cover is really nice. It fit without any issues. Didn't have to trim anything, nothing. Uh, so that was good. The water pump went on nice. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, and I put a um, timing tape from MSD on this balancer. So the, the balancer came out really nice. I mean, I went ahead and primed it and painted it with some engine enamel with uh, you know ceramic in it so it won't peel off when it gets hot. But other than that, I'm not gonna really try to paint the motor or nothing like that. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And I, and I know that you guys are gonna be envious of these valve covers. 
Uh, these are special edition that you can't really get um, with this type of patina on it. So I know you're jealous, but you can't have them. So yeah, let me go over this really quickly on the headers, okay? So everybody talks about how these headers have a problem with uh, clearance on the spark plug. Well, I ended up finding out where. Okay, it's, num it's this one here, it's number uh, four, and all the rest of them you can see, they're just, there's plenty of room, there's no, no problem at all. So I had to actually bend this in a little bit on the header, just ding it in just slightly, and in doing so, the header cracked, okay? Which was no big deal, you know, I went ahead and just fired up the TIG welder. Let me make sure also I didn't leave this on. Sometimes I leave this on. Nope, I turned it off. Uh, so yeah, I got, like I said, I just fired up the TIG welder, TIG welded the crack, no big deal. It's, it came out really good, um, but you can kind of see it there. And um, so now I have room to put a 90 degree boot, okay? And it doesn't touch. I've already, I've already test fit a boot on there and it works really good. Uh, the header alignment was a little bit off as well, so I had to make the holes a little bit bigger on the, uh, the bolt holes and went and bought some, um, a couple more cap screws. Uh, a couple of them I can't get to, so I used some two, uh, just regular uh, header bolts, okay? Uh, and over here, there really isn't an issue, okay? I didn't have to do anything to this header. You can see a 90 degree boot will fit here. Now, I don't know, I'm gonna have to probably figure out a, uh, a wrench, like a special wrench to get on the spark plug, because I don't know if it's gonna hit the wrench like right here, and the same over here. You know, I'm gonna have to come up with something kind of custom that'll go down in here and oh, take that spark plug out, okay? Because that can be a little bit of an issue of, especially with a carburetor, okay? Because, you, you know, I like to check the plugs often, when I'm tuning it. So uh, I gotta make something special to get these off. Um, well, not these, Th these are good. It's just this one and pretty much this one. Um, these two look really easy to get off. This one might be a little bit of an issue too. But as far as the, the, the plug boots go, I don't think there's gonna be a problem with, with any of these and, and these two. So yeah, I went ahead and test fit the H pipe. The H pipe fits really good, so yeah. We're getting really close to being able to drop this thing in and then I can start plumbing everything else, all the fuel system and all that. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, thanks for watching and following along and um, we'll come back with the next one. I'm not sure what it'll be. Hopefully putting the motor in. But anyway, that's going to do it. Check you all next time.